start with our hash map creation, we first of all need to create a Java class file which will contain our codes for us to manipulate and use our hash maps. We will refer to this table which contains our student names and their respective marks for some part of our practicals. To create our Java class file, we first of all need to go to our project, go to the package, and right click and select new. In new, we pick class and give our class a name, which in this case we are calling practical hashmap. We select the methods we want and we pick the public static void and we click finish. Once our Java class file has been generated successfully, we simply delete the auto-generated codes and begin with our hash map creation. So I will be commenting so we can see what is ongoing. So the first thing we would look at is creation of hash maps. And um, we would look at how to create two types of hash maps. This hash map will contain um, key as a string and values as integers, and the second hash map will contain string as a key and values as strings as well. So let's start with the creation of the hash map with um, string as key and values as integers. So how do we create the hash map? We learned we can use the map constructor to do that. So we simply start with a map and we specify what we want as a key. So we want a string as a key and an integer as the value. So after the specification, what name do we want to give to our hash map? Assuming in this hash map we want to store the student age, the key is the student name, and the value is the age of the student. So we call it student age. So this is the name we'll be referencing if we want to manipulate our hash map to store the student age. So we construct it and we use a new hash map to tell the map constructor that we are looking for the hash map. Map. So inside the specifications, we need to declare again, we are looking for a string as a key and an integer as the value. So we are done. However, we can see there are some red lines on our codes. There are errors in there and that is because we have not imported the map utility and the hash map utility. So if we turn our mouse there and click on import, we we'll import the hash map utility as you can see, and we import the map utility, we we'll import it as well. So we have created a hash map called student age, and student age will take key as string and value as an integer. So let's create the second hash map. It is going to take um, key as a string and value as string as well. And in this hash map, assuming we want to store the student's names as key and their respective call of residence as the value. So again, we specify we want a string as a key and string as value. So the name we give to our hash map, we call it student call. And we complete it. Tell the hash the map constructor we are looking for a hash map, and we are done with our map creation. There are yellow lines underlined for the two maps we created. That's because we've not used them. Once we use them, these lines will go. So our first hash map is taking the key 
key at string and value as an integer. And our second hash map is taking both key and values as strings. So we simply indicate that here this is a hash map with key as string as string as well. So now let's look at some of the methods that the hash map has, which we will be able to use to manipulate our hash map. So we want to check methods in hash map. There are a lot of methods that the hash map provides that we can be able to use to manipulate content in the hash map. So for us to be able to access the methods, we first of all need to call the name of the hash map. So assuming we want to check for some methods in the student age map, we can start with the student age, student age dot. Now when we do that, a list of methods will pop up and we can see there is a method called clear and the clear will simply remove all the mappings in the Hash map, which the hash map initially had content in it. So after using the clear method, all the content will disappear and our hash map will be empty. We can also see the uh, contains keys, and the contains key method, all it does is to check if the specific key we are looking for is in the map. The return true if the key is present and false if that key is not present. We also have the contains value and the contains value basically checks for a specific value if it is in the hash map. So it returns true if it is present and returns false if it is absent. We also have a method that we can use to check the entry set. So the entry set will simply return the set view of the mappings that is the key value pair for the objects or items that we inserted in our hash map. We also have the get object, and the get object will simply look into the hash map and return a corresponding value for a specific key. So the get object here, whatever we are putting into the round brackets, has to be a key in the map. If the key is present, it will return the corresponding value. If the key is absent, it will return null to show that there is no key in the hash map. We also have a method that we can use to check if the map is empty. So the dot is empty will return true if the map is empty and false if there are content in the map. Then we also have the key set, and the key set basically returns all the keys unique keys we have in our hash map. So for example, we want to search for a key and we do not know the keys that are in there. We can print out all the keys and know which key we want to look for. We also have what they refer to as the dot values and the dot value returns all the values that are in the hash map without their keys. So we also have what they refer to as the dot size. And this dot size simply returns the number of key value pair mappings that are in the map. We'll play with some of these after we've learned how to insert content into our map. So the last one we'll look at is the dot put. And the dot put, we are simply trying to use this one to insert content into our hash map. So how do we add content to our hash maps? We learn we can use the dot put to add content to our hash maps. So try with the two hash maps we created, where one of them has key as string and value as integer, and the other has key as string. and value as integer, as string as well, sorry. So we know that the student each map is the one that has 
a er string and a value as an integer. And assuming we want to store our students and their ages, where the name of the student is a p and the age is the value, we can simply use the student age group. So we would first of all start with the student age map because that is the one that has the p as a string and value as an integer. If we want to add content to this um, hash map, we need to start with the name of the hash map, so it's student h, and we use a dot put. So dot put. What do we want to insert into our hash map? So we see it is saying what is the key, and the key is string. What is the value? The value is an integer. So assuming we have a student called Ni, and Ni is 8 years old, and we Write something like that, it will insert me with this age of 38 into the hash map. Let's continue and add another student. In this case, we want to add student called um, Bettina, and we assume Bettina is 20, so we put comma 20. This will likewise add Bettina, age of 20, into our student age map. We can add other names. For example, let me just copy this and edit. So I copy and I edit. And assuming we have another student called Samuelis, and Samuelis is 16, and we have another student called Evelyn and Evelyn is 21. So this will insert the content me, Bettina, Samuelis, Evelyn, and their respective ages in our hatch map. Let's also see how we can add content to the string as key and string as value, where in this case we are trying to store the student names and their respective. So again, we start with the student hall map by mentioning the name student hall map. So dot, and we are going to put. So when we select it, the e is a string, the value as well is a string. So assuming me, who is a student, 38 years, he lives in a hall called Camp City. This is his hall of residence. So this will add me and come city as an entry. We can add another student. Let us say we add um, Bettina in. And here we are adding Bettina, assuming Bettina lives at the um, so we add Bettina and a hall of residence is KT. Um, so again, I would copy and edit. So I copy, paste, and instead of Samuel, it's, let's add Evelyn first before we add. Somewhere. So, Evelyn, assuming Evelyn lives at Novotel and somewhere lives, lives at Coldor. So, we are done with our addition. So, let's see if we would be able to print the content in our hash maps and see if they were actually added in the hash map. So we'll print content in hash map. So we learned that we can use the system out the print line and the name of the hash map to see what is actually in the hash map. So let's start with the student hmap. So say system 
out the print line and we put the name of our hash map student page to print out the content in our student page map. We can do the same and print out the content in our student call map. So we just change the name from student page to call. When we run it, you would see that it will print out the content in the two maps for us. So as we can see, the student page map is the first one we printed and it has Evelyn, Bettina, Samuelis and me. So if we pay attention during the theory, we learned that the order in which we put the content in the hash map is not the same order in which they are stored because of the hashing that is done on the keys. So in our student page map, we initially put me first and put Evelyn last. However, when it's taught, Evelyn is taught first, followed by Bettina, then Samuel is and me is taught last. So the order has been changed. Similarly, in the student hall map, you can see that Evelyn again is taught first, Bettina followed, Samuel is followed, and me is last. But when we look at the order in which they were inserted, Evelyn was inserted head, but now it is thought as a first item. So that is how we would be able to print the content in our hash maps. So we'll go back to the methods that we played with to see how they work. We learned that we can use a dot clear to clear content in the hash map. Let us see if it actually works. So we want to clear the content in the student H map. It says student H dot clear. When we run it, it's supposed to clear everything in the student H map. But before we do that, let us copy this and paste below to see that it is actually clearing it. So before we clear, we print it out. And after clearing, we print it out again to see if the content were actually clear. So we run it again, and we can see the, sec the third printout is nothing because the student page dot clear removes everything that we have in our hash map. So let's take this out and play with the other methods. Assuming we want to find out if in our student age map there is a particular student or there's a particular key, we can simply use the dot contains key. So we say student each each map dot contains key. And because our student age map the key is a string, we need to search for a string. So assuming we want to search if there is a student called Raymond in our student age map. So to enable us to see if it is true or false, we simply just print out if it contains key. So we copy that and paste, and we print it out. So we are printing out student each that contains key ray. If there is Raymond in the key, it will return true. If there is no Raymond, it will return false. So when we run it, we see that there is no Raymond because as false return. So we can actually check to see if this is true by printing the key set in our student age map. So we know that we can do that by using what they refer to as the key set. So again, we want to find out all the keys that are in the student age map. So we say system.out print line student each but we want the key set so we should print all the keys in the student page map for us so when we run it we'll see all the keys we have Evelyn, Bettina, Samuelis and me there is no ray and it is actually true there is no student called ray so we could have also searched for a student each to 
see if there's a student in the class that is probably, let's say, 21. So we simply say system.out student age dot contains value. And the value we are looking for is an integer. So we put 21 and we run it. So if there's no one in the class it has 21, we'll get a false. If there's someone, we'll get a true return. So we run it again, and we can see the first false is for searching for Raymond, and the second, the, the true we have is for searching for 21. So it means there's a student that is 21 years old in our class. So we can check to see all the values, is it actually true that there's 21 as a value in our class? So we simply print it out again. And in this case, instead of printing the key set, we are going to print only the values. So we want to type student page dot values and we should print all the values that are in our student page map. 